Make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And to never miss another lecture from Miracle, hit the bell icon to get regular updates on English literature. Welcome to Miracle English Language and Literature Institute. I'm Adhupa and I'm back with a new video for you all people and with a new author to discuss briefly with you. The author I have chosen for today to be discussed with you all was an Elizabethan courtier who served as protestant political liaison for Queen Elizabeth I. He was an Elizabethan courtier, soldier, poet and a patron of scholars and poets and considered as an ideal gentleman of his day. Even his poetry bears the stamp of paradox. He did not consider himself as a writer and surprisingly his half of his life was devoted to writing. I think you must have guessed who the author is. He is Sir Philip Sidney. Sir Philip Sidney was born on November 30, 1554 at Penshurst, Kent, London. He was very much admired and respected for his high intelligence. He also served Queen Elizabeth I. Now, moving towards his early life, his father, Sir Henry Philip, was a close confidant and advisor of Edward VI. But when the young king died, Henry Philip stayed in favour of Catholic Queen Mary and named his son after the king, Philip II of Spain who also agreed to be his godfather. His mother was Lady Mary Dudley, who was the daughter of Duke of Northumberland, sister of Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, who was a personal favourite and was a confidant of Queen Elizabeth I. The young Philip started his education at Shrewsbury School and was transferred at the age of 13 to University of Oxford's Christ Church College. At the school, he was admired and respected for his academic subjects and mastery. He was fluent in grammar, mathematics, French, Greek and rhetorics. Three years later, he was sent to the continent to further his studies. In 1579, he was enlisted as a diplomat and he served as an envoy to King Charles IX. Sidney was an excellent horseman. He participated in tournaments and he was a great entertainer of the court. In January 1583, he was knighted in order to further his education and to stand for his friend Prince Casimir. In September, he married Frances, the secretary of Queen Elizabeth, and they had a daughter named Elizabeth. Now moving towards his major works. His major works include Astrophil and Stella, The Countess of Pembroke, Arcadia, The Defense of Poesy, and some other works too. Firstly, taking up Astrophil and Stella, published in 1582, now called as Astrophil and Stella, includes 108 sonnets, 11 songs, and is the first in the long line of Elizabethan sonnet cycles. Stella translates from Latin into star, and Astrophil translates into Greek star lover. Though it is not very clear, but it is generally accepted that the Stella in Astrophil and Stella is his aunt Penelope Devereux and Astrophil is Sidney himself. Astrophil and Stella tracks a development of a love affair. Astrophil is in a passionate love with Stella but at the end Stella refuses to marry or be in love with Astrophil because she is already married. Now moving towards another major work of Sir Philip Sidney. The Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia, published in 1590, is a long verse written in the last of 16th century. He wrote this to entertain his sister, Lady Mary Herbert, who herself was a great patron of writers. There are two versions of this work, Old Arcadia and New Arcadia. The book is an unlikely romance which offers the idealistic views of certain characters. This work is influenced by Greek literature and even William Shakespeare was inspired from the manuscripts and he took a subplot of Gloucester in his play King Lear from this work. 
Now, moving towards his very famous and major work, The Defense of Poesy. Sir Philip Sidney's Defense of Poesy was published posthumously in 1595. It was an earlier work in English criticism in which Sidney is seen defending the charges put up by Stephen Dusson against poesy. By poesy, Sidney doesn't mean just poetry, but he includes all the arts, the fictionalized dramas and the plays. He also composed other poems and later began his work on paraphrase of songs. He did not allow his writings to be published during his lifetime because of the gentlemanly code of avoiding commercialism. Sidney's compatriots in poetry included Edmund Spencer, Gabriel Harvey, Samuel Daniel, and Edward Dyer. Sidney was also lampooned in several plays of Shakespeare, including The Merry Wives of Windsor and Twelfth Night. Philip died on October 17, 1586, in the battle at Zutphen against the Catholic Spanish forces. He was buried in St. Paul's Cathedral in London with a type of funeral that was reserved only for the noblemen. It is not what he did, but what he was made him widely admired by the people. 42 years later, after Sidney's death, his school fellow Grivel engraved on his tombstone, servant to Queen Elizabeth, counsellor to King James, and friend to Edmund Spencer. In 1652, Philip Sidney's biography was published. I hope you appreciated my efforts and found a great help in this discussion. I would also recommend you to join Miracle Institute, whether it be for bachelor's, master's or UGC net course. For more videos, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.